What am I passionate about? Is it too late to follow my dreams? How can I get to where I want to be faster? These are some of the questions young adults are asking. To find the answers, we set out around the world to meet the individuals who are making a difference. These are their stories. These are your shortcuts. We had a lot of people reach out to us about how to adopt a dog and where we got our dogs. I call him our dogs now because they're basically his too. Right. He's like the uncle. And um, Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just we, we really felt like we had something unique. Um, and we wanted to spread awareness, you know, as far around the world as we could. I mean, I just gotta imagine, you know, you, like, what the fuck, man? Like, you're literally just like, I'm gonna sell my house and go on an RV bus, tour bus, with my friend and my six dogs, and let's see what happens. Um, I mean, kind of like that. Well, basically, so Luke, when Luke and I met, and I was always trying to hang out with him in order to edit videos and just enjoy his company as well, he he had an RV at the time that he was living in, and he I told him to just park it at my house. So we would be in the RV editing videos, and I would be answering all these emails, answering these questions about you know how to rescue a dog, where to rescue a dog, where okay. to get my dogs. Okay. So I really like that was kind of like all those different questions really helped me realize that there was a gap. Like it was those questions, you know, thousands of questions regarding animal rescue. And how my dogs were so well trained, you know, people were surprised that my dogs were re not only rescues, but also so well trained. So it really helped me figure out, and I would read these messages to him, like, dude, this person doesn't believe me that Lily is a rescuer. They don't believe me that Stella Pitbull is this mm. well trained and is a rescue. So it was really like him and I answering these questions together while editing videos, making people laugh. You know, we get all these emails about how we transform someone's life and altered someone's way of thinking to be more positive or take more action, whatever it is. And being in that RV where we're like, dude, we, we could do this, like we could do this just full time basically. Having said that, like I would never give someone the advice, don't be afraid and be confident because we weren't, you know, it was, it was the, that the transition from not having a job to spending all of my money on an RV. I didn't have a house uh, to own. I had a lease and my landlord let me out of the lease, which is great because I literally wouldn't have been able to afford next month's rent. Right. But I never was super confident. I never had no fear. You know, these people that tell you that it's for uh, likes and shares, it's not genuine, it's not true. There's no one out there who started a business, who took a risk, that wasn't afraid. Even if it's someone with, uh, very successful parents who fund everything, that person still has that fear because no one wants to fail. Right. You know, you still have even more pressure on you if it's given to you because everyone in the world is expecting you to be successful no matter what. So you really have to crush it. That right, was, let's talk about dogs. Oh yeah. So we're uh, live here. <laughs> crazy if that fucking broke. <laughs> let's talk about dogs. <laughs> 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 Shatter Mark's desk. <laughs> um, so, guys came in last night around 9, 9.55 to be exact, 9 10 p.m. 9.57, right? Who's counting? And uh, got a lot of dogs with you. So, what, what have you guys been doing for the last, what, couple months? Just driving around in the tour bus and rescuing dogs? It's more when did you, you guys start? What's going we left, on? Uh, we left February 1st, so like three months. Uh, maybe t two or three months prior to that, we we both quit our jobs. Uh, we kind of wanted to figure out like what we were truly supposed to do with our lives. Um, we were we lived together at the time. We became friends. We've only been friends for like 15, 16 months. Is this in Florida? Is this just like this is in California? In, oh, okay. in Venice Beach, California. And uh, I had a bunch of dogs, the same dogs I have now. I had six dogs. He's a photographer. Damn. So we linked up because he would, you know, take pictures of my dogs and I helped me create awesome content. And, you know, we just felt like there was a bigger purpose out there. Here's been the best stop. Best <laughs> stop? That's what we like to hear. Uh, we really liked Aspen uh, just in really terms of the entire up. weekend. Um, everything went really well. You know, Aspen was from, awesome. Yeah, from like a content perspective, from a people perspective, from the musicians that, you know, that we hung out with. Mm -hmm. um, 
being in nature and all that. It was, it, Aspen was really, really cool. We also had a really good time in Austin, Texas. We were there during South by. I'm sure you're familiar with South by Southwest. Yeah. yeah. And that's an amazing ambiance. We're really thinking about going there next year. You definitely should. should. Um, yeah. Especially with, you know, what you guys are doing. Mm. Um, cause it's just a networking hub of everybody's there. Um, so we were there during that time. Um, so that was really fun. We love New York city. But that was really fun. So um, we had great hikes in New Hampshire and Vermont and those were kind of underrated states that we really didn't know yeah. what to kind of expect tucked up in the Northeast. Cool. And, uh, so that was really fun. Everywhere's been great, man. Cool. Hard to pick one. Definitely. Cool. Agree more. Yeah. I think one of the keys, I think there's many, but progress is one of them. And a lot of times when people feel stuck, they live there. Yeah. Right. Totally. And you really just have to take one step forward and buying a book is not it. Right. Right. You know, if you're, if you're the type of person to read the book and then do it, that's different. Right. But in my opinion, people have already read the books. It's like, is, is there really in that new book, is there going to be that one little thing that yeah. changes everything? Having said that, just so you know, because I'm an avid, I love reading. If you're, if you're already on your mission and you already have that mindset that nothing's getting in your way, the, what's beautiful about reading a book, even though it's the same thing you've already read, it's that reminder then you're, that you're on the right track or you might take that little tweak that someone said, you could, uh, that someone wrote and you could apply it to your business. So I'm not saying that there's not value there. I don't want to be misunderstood. There is so much beautiful, more value in books than anything else. What I'm saying is don't right. use your book as a tool to instead of get you to your Don't use it to justify what you, what you want to do. Just don't look at it as taking action. That, that's not fair. Okay. It's not taking action. You bought a book. Right. You're not getting closer to your goal. No. You're only getting closer to your goal if you finish it and you're applying it. That's the difference. Okay. Feel me? Yeah. The, the natural instinct part of that, you just gotta kind of listen to yourself and kind of like I said, poor man, you can't, can't plan to fight a bear. Exactly. You can't plan to fight a bear. You know, but if that bear comes, it's gonna be that bear's last day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Okay. So I'm not gonna tell someone to be confident. It's be afraid and do it anyway. Uh, so, you know, what's, what's going on next year? You're in Richfield, Washington, out of all places in America right now. And then you're taking it up to Canada, right? So, you know, we're, we, you know, we don't have too many plans right now, obviously. We, we've already gone over that, but what, what other states, what other kind of tours? Or, and, yeah, and no, definitely, tell the viewers, definitely tell the viewers what you guys are doing in Oregon to make an impact. I think people can de definitely benefit from that and want to help. For the event? Yeah, the event. Yeah, like part of this tour is um, the, a big part, the main part is to get dogs adopted. And we have adoption events um, at all the different cities and states that we visit. And in Oregon, on uh, Thursday from 6 to 8, we have an adoption event. It's called Fido's. We have Fido's. Or Fido's. Fido's. Fido's, yeah. Fido's. Fido's. I'm trying to look up the name, but it's Fido's. F I D O S. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, <laughs> They, um, they're really great. You know, it's a type of place. It's a brewery, um, bar slash restaurant. You, no matter when you go, they have adoptable dogs just walking around there. So we're excited to partner with them for this. Right on. <coughs> and then tell me what you guys are doing with this, uh, <coughs> CBD oil. I mean, this is some cool stuff. I mean, it, I've never heard of it for dogs. I mean, no. How is it? No. How is it? What's, what is it? Yeah. I mean, it all came about just because like it's so cool because the brand that we sell is the company that i've been using for years mm -hmm. so it all happened like two years ago i posted how i was taking cbd for my back pain mm -hmm. i've had two spine surgeries and at the same time frame around that time frame i adopted living my saint bernard and she was like we almost had to put her down she was having these awful seizures I love her. she's the best it's my favorite one the best. <laughs> um, she had, she was having this terror, I mean, she really almost didn't make it, dude. And these seizures would last like 30 seconds to a minute. It was awful to watch. It was to, and I just got her. And someone, and I tried like every medication, thousand, you know, the, yeah. the, the adoption was $150. The first month I spent over five grand on her trying to figure this out. Right. It was awful. Damn. Uh, and someone was like, you should give her the CBD that you take. I was like, are you serious? Yeah. And I mean, I, I looked it up, I guess like even a couple years ago, it was, Pretty common, not as common as it is now. But uh, dude, I gave her CBD and that was the first day since I had her, she didn't have seizures. No way. Yeah. Um, she Then she got a seizure the next day, but at least that space came out. And then the more I gave it, to, eventually she just stopped having them completely. It was insane. And now we created a business out of it. It's a magical flower, man. Yeah, and the it's one that we have, lives. 100%. And the one like the, the one that we sell is for, it's for dogs and humans. You can give it to yourself or give it to your dog. 
that's that's how you're going to be successful. Because yeah. eventually, like totally. here, here's what's great is you're not going to die. Yeah. And when you remember that, like when you like that's what I would tell myself. Like whatever happened, I'm not going to die. And that knowing that was a greater reason for me to take a maximum the, the maximum amount of risk because the alternative was not doing it and I'm still gonna die anyways. Do you see what I'm saying when sure. I say that? Yeah. Like what if you know, going against and changing the trajectory of like a normal career kind of just, hey, I'm gonna get my best friend in the RV and we're gonna go with like my six dogs and help risky dogs around the world and see what comes next. That's leadership right there. You know, that's someone kind of uh, inspiring others, if you will, uh, along the way and actually going from point A to point B and, and making an impact on other people's lives and dogs' lives as well. Uh, so what would you say your definition of a real leader would be? First, I appreciate the compliment. I really do. I, uh, to me, a real leader doesn't have to be someone who uh, does anything even similar to what I've done or someone that, you know, quits their job and starts their dreams. To me, that like, for me, you are just as good, even greater of a leader, if you will, if you manage a group, one person, two, four people, and you have a very strong positive impact on their life. That is a real leader. Whether you're doing it with, you're an amazing parent, and you're actually giving your kid, you know, an open mindset, uh, po like positive values, no judgment. You know, as long as you're giving, a leader is giving anyone, right? Not even anyone, any living thing, you know, a, a good foundation or continued positive tools of success. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Definitely, yeah. Like, I really love those stories you hear at the workplace where it's like maybe they don't like the company, you know, and they're not getting paid that well, but they just respect their boss so much. Mm. To me, a leader, to sum it up, you know, I have a one of someone I used to work for who is now a mentor of mine and, uh, a friend as well. His name is Billy Smitty. I used to work for him. And he said he he was he was everyone's boss. He managed the entire area. And he said, You won't maybe you won't like me, but hopefully you respect me. Right. And what we learned is that if you respect someone, even if you disagree with them, you eventually like them. Right. And I think that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. You know, his intention was always good. His intention was always to benefit the company, which ultimately would benefit you. And I think that's what a leader is. There's many aspects, but in short, unfortunately, that was my short answer. Yeah. It's, it's that. Definitely. Appreciate it. Totally. Oh, and you're, you put together a plan, it will get destroyed no matter what. Your plan, if you, if you want to, in my mind, you cannot, anyone cannot listen to us, just like I'm calling other things bullshit, maybe this is. The truth is, is that as long as you want to do something great in your heart, just start going in that direction, no matter the sharks, the waves, no matter what. You have to just go in that direction. And, and taking one step, like people say, it all starts with a single step. That's not true. Though if you th it depends what you consider a step. Is asking advice a step? Because to me, asking for advice is a step backwards. Definitely. I love it. The, I, I love it. Hmm. And what I would tell people is, you're gonna be scared, that doesn't make you different than any of the other players or business professionals, whatever it is. You're gonna be scared, you're not always gonna be confident, you're gonna have negative self-doubt, you're gonna have all these things that are trying to stop you from living your dreams. And what's beautiful about fear, it only wants to protect you. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't, people shouldn't talk about fear like it's just a terrible thing. It's there to protect you. Fear has saved your life many times. And um, you just have to know when and when not to listen to it the alternative like no one no one is going to walk into your cubicle at work and say listen I know you're meant for great things here's this key to opportunity go use it all right. <laughs> yeah. right you can watch these videos and watch your Gary's and your Tony's and all these people but mm -hmm. at the end of the day like no one at that seminar you hear that story it's the same as hearing a shark attack it's very rare right. you hear that story where someone's like what do you do I do this. What do you do? Oh, you should work for me, millionaire. That like don't count on yeah, that. It's, yeah. You're equal. You're, you're you have this. That's just as good a chance as winning the lottery. You have to sure. just go with your gut. You have to fucking fight every day. Yeah. You have to take the beating and go and go and go until one dark cloud after another moves out. You see a little sun, and now you're gonna get the taste of blood. 
Now you see more sun and then all of a sudden it's like you start feeling the rays and you're like, this is what I was meant to do. I can feel in the room right now. Huh? Cool story, but uh, what I was gonna say was, you were telling me about, which really resonated with me, was we were sitting at the dining table and you are talking about, my mom had asked you guys if you guys had had a plan. Mm -hmm. And you say, every time we have a plan, it doesn't go the way we want it to. And yeah. if we feel like it's bad, it's better to not have a plan in our situation and kind of let the things come to us. And usually, it all, or at least so far, it's always worked out. Yeah. You kind of explain to our viewers who didn't get to sit at that dinner table, kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah, and I can expand. I think, it, if I'm gonna answer your question in addition to like this, I have to say, how come I know? Not this one. I'm just had it. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> I'm just joking. So, Here's the thing, everyone wants to ask questions before they jump in the ocean, right? Other sharks, what are you gonna get? Someone, you're either gonna get yes or no, right? right. If you hear no, but you are afraid of the ocean. Other sharks, no. Your next question will be, are the waves big? No. Are there eels? No. Are there barracuda? Yes, I don't want to go in. Now this person in their head thinks that they did what they could. They took it as far as they could to jump in, in the ocean, to get over their field, their fears. But they were searching for the reason not to do it. 99% hmm. of the people will buy a book on how to grow their business. But the truth is what? The truth is, is they were looking to see if they can. They want to make sure that they can't. Uh. They want to make sure that they cannot. Shit. Right? We can talk about diet, for example. It's like a, a, a person who loves eating meat. They already know, they, don't, they won't read a book about being a vegan. Why is that? It doesn't matter what you think. If you eat one pound of salad or one pound of steak, one's going to make you feel like crap after, and the other one, you can do whatever you want, right? Right. Okay. But no one would want, even though you know that, you don't want to be told that, right? You want to hear the answer that you want. And that's the same thing with motivation. People, they buy the book and to them, they are motivated because they bought the book, how to grow their business. Right. Right? Interesting. Yeah. I want to talk about your back pain now. Sure. Because I've, heard, I've had my friend's dad takes it for his back pain as well, or his hip pain, whatever it mm -hmm. is. Now I guess I just never really, I said, well, wouldn't you rather take like a painkiller or stuff? But I'm thinking, I'm like, well, those are probably 10 times as addictive. 10 times stronger and more expensive when a CBD oil is And it comes with side effects. What would yeah. you, well, I was just going to say, when you, compare, sure. when you say 10 times more addictive, it, it, CBD is not addictive. That's yeah. right. It, it's not addictive. That's what I meant. The, no, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, the um, yeah to, to, be, to be... Very uh, addictive. To, oh, to be transparent with you, I uh, did mess around with painkillers for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think that uh, I had an issue whatsoever, mm -hmm. but basically, I was in excruciating pain. I did what I was supposed to do in my eyes and probably in anyone's eyes. I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I had surgery. I was in pain. The doctor knew I was in pain. He or she, I mean, I had many doctors, yeah. like many. They gave me pills. I took them. Oh yeah, those just throw them at you. Yeah, for sure. The pain would go away for an hour. What I noticed is the pain would come back even stronger. Mm. So now I'm like living on these things. I don't realize I have a problem, but I'm so irritable. I, I don't think it's coming from the pills because the doctors gave them to me. Right. But it was a very, very dark period of my life. And I'm very, very happy that it was only for about six months. It was, it was six months long uh, of just like, I'll never forget. Well, Wait. Luke, what's going through your head when he's telling you this? <laughs> I mean, are you just like, yeah, let's do it or? Yeah, no, I was very, 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 very much on board. Yeah, I'm like an avid traveler, okay. um, so the element of You're traveling saying, right. with a cause is is incredible. Um, so I was very much on board, um, and then yeah, we uploaded the Kickstarter, and then a lot of other people got on board. And who and doesn't like dogs, of, right? Sorry. And who doesn't like and dogs? Who doesn't like dogs? Yeah. So it 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 made it much easier getting the support from you know creating this Kickstarter project, getting support from people that we didn't even know, donating money, like yeah, do it. That gave us a lot of inspiration and then it was just, yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. So why do I bring that up? What does it have to do with your question about planning? Planning is a rule of business. Yes. That isn't true. Right. 
all the things that people have heard about how to respond to an email, the best way to do to run a meeting, the, the, the way to put together a PowerPoint. None of it is true. None of it is true. It worked for, you know, Susan so and so or Jane Jane right. Smith. It worked for that person. Now they're giving you the advice of what they did, and we feel like because we're somewhat following their footsteps, we'll be successful. None of it is actually true. I love it. You don't need a plan. You don't need advice. You don't need to ask anyone. You know what you're supposed to do. If someone is watching this right now, this is not the first uh, podcast or any type of success story that they've heard. They only needed to hear it one time. They could have taken that, gone with it, made the mistakes, learned from those mistakes, and been successful. But you're waiting. They're waiting days, months, years. They're going to wait their lifetime to continue to do the bare minimum sort of action in order to feel fulfilled because people have a great habit of bullshitting themselves. I'm just worried that a bear's gonna come after one of my dogs, you know, and then I have to defend it. But anyways, plans change every day, every second, and the thing is, you work so hard in this plan. I know it works for some people, by the way. You ask me personally. Some yeah. people go for it. But you know what you should ask yourself is, what is your plan as soon as that plan doesn't go through? And then a bigger thing is, how will you react to the plan? Right the failure of the plan. Right, right. If you have this plan, you say, look, I don't care. I, if it fails, I'm still, then it's okay. But if I, if you told me, Lee, you have to come up with a plan, like let's just say it was a game, you have to come up with a plan uh, in the next 20 minutes, I will give you five of them. Yeah. I would never do You know, and that's the part where I'm stuck right now. It's like, we had all this. Did you turn the camera off? No, it's on. Okay. It's like, it's like, I'm so stuck right now because I've just been planning and planning and planning. Like, Oh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. And then yesterday, I finally just like, fuck, I'm, like I'm, not, I'm just gonna make my own podcast. And I made my own podcast. And I literally just felt so great. And I feel like it opened so many doors of opportunity. Yeah, of course. And I was like, why have I just been? Why have I just did in the first place? Progress is the like, key to happiness, in my mind. Nice, nice. Well, right on. Uh, so like, I guess a thing for me, I got interviewing all these startup, not startups, but entrepreneurs. Um, I always ask them, kind of, what, what gave you that confidence to kind of just say, hey, there's this gap, this is the solution, this is going to work, or was it, or is it more just kind of like, I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to, I'm just going to do my own thing and see kind you of comes my way. It's like a, a big problem that I have in the motivational speaker realm, like realm, if you will, niche, and you often hear people like saying, have no fear, like be confident. Like, just go for it. Mm -hmm. And that is really, really unfair to say to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think when you accomplish something, like anything, when you accomplish anything that someone else wants to do, that right there gives you some sort of responsibility if you're like some sort of moral good person that wants to give advice, right? Mm -hmm. And we're very lucky that like what we're doing in a lot of people's eyes is a dream job. You know, if you want to make it sound easy, we're traveling around the entire country in an RV with six rescue dogs making fun videos. But, you know, I, it's not fair for me to say I've had a lot of regular jobs, if you will, and I can tell you that this is the hardest thing that I've ever done, and this right. is way harder than your normal job, and I say that respectfully. Totally.